Christ is risen. The disciples had been so been through so much in the last few days, and now this. Jesus appeared. The doors were locked, they were afraid, and somehow Jesus as God, he appears. What he says is amazing. Peace be with you. He says, I've got peace and I've come to bring it for you. And the disciples that were there, John just simply says they were, they were overjoyed because they hadn't had much peace leading up to that. Afraid. Trapped in that locked room. Fearful of so many things. It, it's easy for us to relate, isn't it? There's things we're afraid of. There's things we fear. There's, there's times in our life when we feel trapped and, and don't know what to do. And that's why Jesus had John record these words, that you might hear them and believe. Peace be with you. Because we know what it's like not to have peace. We know what it's like to, to have our life turned upside down to be agitated by this thing or that thing or that person or this situation. and We know what that's like. And so Jesus continues to come and say, peace. I've got peace and I'm the only one that can really bring it and so I bring it to you. Take my peace. Make it yours. The disciples that were there that first Easter evening, they received that peace. And then as they received that peace, Jesus came to them again and said those words again. Peace be with you. Jesus wanted to make sure that they got that peace. And then he wanted to make sure that this message of peace would go on throughout time. So he says, receive the Holy Spirit. I don't know if we like people breathing on us. But when Jesus does, it's great. He breathes on the disciples. He, he spirits them. Those two words are closely related, breathe and spirit. And, and so what he wants to give them, he himself gives. And now filled with peace, they were to bring peace to the world. Filled with the joy of seeing their Savior, they were now to let other people see their Savior. Through these simple words, I forgive you all your sins. That's one of the reasons why the Christian church for years it says it would be a good idea to start our worship that way, huh? One sent by Jesus, who he himself has received peace, to now breathe peace on you. Because he knows you need it. 
He knows that sin has you fearful. He knows that situations sometimes make you feel trapped. So he says, don't ever forget what I came to bring. He says, the empty tomb is full of peace. And I've come this day to bring it to you. That was one of the reasons why God did that object lesson on Good Friday. At the temple, there was this curtain that divided the place where God's presence was, the Holy of Holies. It was to tell the people that you don't dare go in contact with a holy God. You are not at peace with him. But the moment Jesus died, the Bible tells us that that temple curtain was torn in two, and God was saying, I'm no longer mad at you, at your sin. I was mad. I was mad about your sin, and I put your sin on Jesus, and so you never have to fear. You never have to fear me again. You don't have to fear when you did it again. When you, you heard the message of, of, of Paul, when he had said that, that there was to be repentance and forgiveness and that they should then turn from their sins and you don't ever have to fear. Fear that you did it again. Jesus comes and breaks into your locked heart and he says, Peace. Peace for you. Your sins are forgiven. The disciples were so glad that their risen Lord was alive. They were so glad that they had the peace of forgiveness of sins. They were joyful. And when Thomas, who wasn't there that night when, when he came, they said, we've seen the Lord. Thomas didn't believe. Now, I have to be honest, I, I think Thomas gets a little bit of a bad rap. He's known for this situation. He's known as Doubting Thomas. But if you go through all of the resurrection accounts, no one ever believes right away. The women didn't. They went and told the disciples, and the disciples, they didn't believe the women. The angel and Jesus had told the women, tell the disciples to meet me in Galilee. And where do we find the disciples? In Jerusalem. They didn't believe until they saw. And so I think Thomas gets a little bit of a bad rap. We, we know him as doubting. He's called Didymus, the twin. And then I realize I'm his twin. Sometimes when those non-peaceful situations come up in my life, I act like my twin. How about you? Then you realize that Thomas is not just having a twin. There's triplets. There's Thomas, there's me, and then there's you. Don't, we don't always believe God's promise. We, we want to, to see it for real first before we believe. It. And then Jesus does what he did for the disciples. But he 
did for Thomas. He meets us where we're at and he says, okay, I'll give you something. He told Thomas, here I am. I know what you've been thinking, Thomas. So touch me. It's real. I'm alive. He knows we like to touch things too, and so he says, okay, come here. Here's some water. It pictures you being drowned and buried, just like I was. It also pictures you being raised to life too, just like I am. I make you my child. You died to sin and you're raised to new life. He says, come. Come to this table. Taste and see. This is my body. Taste and see. This is my blood. Drink it. It's for you. For forgiveness. And he comes to us with simple words. Paul knew that they were simple words. And yet it gave him the courage to stand up to a king and say, Jesus has died, Jesus has risen, and your sins are all forgiven in Christ. And the king and the world today says, you're crazy. He say, no. I've heard it. It's true. And then Jesus does this wonderful thing. He puts you in his story. Blessed. That's the name and title he gives you today. You're blessed because you haven't seen and yet you believe. The writer to the Hebrew says that's that's the essence of what faith is, being certain of what we haven't seen. And Jesus says that's right, it's true about you. Today you walk out of this building and you can be confident you're blessed because the tomb is empty but full of peace for you that takes away fear that takes away doubt and makes you blessed and so as you go out and and as you Sense those situations where where sin has been the victor over you again, where where doubt has crept in, where you feel trapped, and where you wonder, how is this going to work? The Spirit comes through his word and he breathes on you. And you receive. He breathes on you through the words of a simple person like me. He breathes on you from the words of brothers and sisters in Christ. He breathes on you baptism in the Lord's Supper and says, peace. And there's Thomas, my twin. He says, my Lord and my God. Paul had wished what happened with King Agrippa and all that were gathered that day is what Jesus wished would happen with you. That someone would come to you with this word of peace and you would believe. You have. 
disciples, your Savior Jesus, and me, were overjoyed. <laughs>